Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to go over friction as a bit of a recap from the National 5 course. So let's get started. Now the first thing to look at is the definition of friction, and it says that friction is a force which opposes the motion of an object. It acts between any two surfaces in contact. So if we look at this picture, imagine you've got a block sitting on a tabletop and the block is moving this way, then it's going to have friction acting in the opposite direction against it. And that frictional force is arising because the two objects, the tabletop and the block, are in contact with each other. And it's actually at the molecular level, at the point of contact at which the frictional force will occur. It then says here that moving objects experience friction due to the contact with a surface. For example, the road, rails or water. So if it's a train, it will have contact with the rails, if it's a boat it will have contact with the water, and if it's any kind of land vehicle then it will be the tyres in contact with the road. Now just as a bit of a reminder from National 5, you should remember that in order to increase friction, you could either increase the size of the surface areas that rub together, or use materials with rougher surface areas. In order to decrease friction on the other hand, you could use lubricants, for example oil, or a thin layer of air such as in an air hockey table, or you could streamline the shape of an object which is what car manufacturers do for sports cars, and that is going to decrease friction. Lastly, you should remember that air resistance, which is also called drag, is a type of frictional force caused by air particles coming into contact with an object. So an easy example to think about for that is a skydiver opening a parachute, and the air particles are going to come into contact with the inside of the parachute and that's going to cause an air resistance or a drag force upwards on the skydiver. I'll now just show you a quick simulation to show you the effect that a frictional force will have on an object. So let's assume we have a curved track and a skater on the curved track, but we're going to assume there's no friction between the track and the wheels of the skateboard to begin with, and there's also going to be no air resistance. So we're assuming no friction and no air resistance. So if I put the skater on the track here, What we should expect to see, because there's no friction and no air resistance, then there's going to be no losses in energy, and this means that the skater will continue to move up to the same point each time. And that's because there is no friction between the tyres of the skateboard and the track, causing them to slow down. If, however, we introduce friction into the scenario, then that means that the skater will likely slow down quite quickly. So if I put them up here, You'll notice this time they've not come up to the same height and that is because they're losing energy due to air resistance and due to friction between the tyres of the skateboard and the track. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.